more new build and it might not seem that bad but with each new phase just a little bit more of the countryside a little bit more of nature gets eaten away and lost forever of course each previous generation is to blame for the progress of the following generation right back to the days of the horse and cart revenue and commerce developed by transporting goods around the country in a horse and cart led to the development of the canals and the revenue earned from that led to the development of railways and then roads so if you want to blame anyone blame our ancestors with their horses and cart possibly have you heard the tale of Aslan and the gent have you seen their travels before well did you know that they're back again and cruising the canals once more Sold up, downsized for a minimalised alternative life afloat. Going boldly where thousands have been before. One man, one life, one boat. Truth almighty. I watched him come under the bridge and he nearly went into the side of the bridge there. And then he nearly went into the bank. And then he crashed into me. And he just looks at me like I'm simple. And just goes, first timers. He's giving it way, way too much gas. And I could hear he's using his bow thruster, which you don't use for cruising anyway. He's trying to steer away from me but he's using the bow thruster to steer the front into the side of Aslan and along the gunnel, I just had a quick look all, all the paints are chewed up I do despair at times another boat, but uh, this one looks like it's being piloted by someone who knows what they're doing Some crazy fool going by in a higher boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. into me. Just talking to a boat about there, I asked him if they encountered a higher boater just now. He said, yeah, he crashed into several boats coming along here and the bank. <laughs> he thought it was quite funny. I didn't. He crashed into my boat and damaged the paint. Luckily, not the red paint, just the green on the gunnels. But I won't go on about it. Now about a mile to Faisley Junction.
now approaching Faisley Junction. There's a water point right by here. I'm just going to tip the tank and take a closer look at the uh, paint damage, I think. Faisley Junction. And he's worn the black in away. And he's down to the metal, I think. Fortunately, the keen canal boater is always prepared. Pit stop complete. Faisley Junction and down there is the Birmingham Faisley Canal just around this corner then and I'm going to moor up nice mooring rings here and two-day moorings. In the winter, however, all moorings become 14 days, regardless of how long they say. But I was advised, before I embarked on this journey, to moor up just a bit further on beyond this bridge. Looks like others have taken similar advice as well. right in between these two boats if I can fit. The area surrounding Faisley Junction is essentially a roundabout with some shops next to it. There's a garage when you need fuel for your generator, a Tesco Express and several takeaways. Of more interest, next to the actual junction itself, is this original old house and this ex-working mill, which has been converted into apartments.
an uneventful and pleasant stop near Faisley Junction. Today I'll be moving on about five and a half miles to the town of Polesworth. Along the way we'll go through two uphill locks and through the outer suburbs of Tamworth. An old Second World War pillbox, a lookout for soldiers, more than likely the old dad's army, which was really a thing. For once, the Met Office have almost got the weather forecast correct. They predicted blue skies with lots of cloud and cold. They also predicted that right now there'd be 36 mile an hour winds. I'm pleased to see they were completely wrong about that one. First of the two locks ahead.
one down and a boat has just come down the lock ahead and he's waiting for me to come out. According to that gentleman there, he hasn't seen a boat all day. Except for me, of course. Two viewers there, Danny and Leanne. Nice meeting you. That's the two locks out the way, and no more until the flight of 11 at Atherston, which is around seven miles away. Holdsworth, however, where I'm heading today, is now about four miles away. Admittedly, these aren't the most picturesque stretches of canal, but bear in mind this was once an area entirely overrun with industry, and is very steadily becoming more urban and rural in places. Many of the old mines and industrial areas have now been turned into nature reserves and ponds and lakes. One of the slag heaps from mining has even become an actual man-made mountain. For sale, Chesterfield sofa. One careful owner. That wind promised by the Met Office is actually showing signs of appearing. So it comes and goes. So they might be right after all. Just not at the right time. Bridge 67, and now around three miles to Polesworth. You may have gained the impression over the years that I'm not a huge fan of the Met Office. Not so much because you know, rarely 
are their forecast correct, but more that they like to present every day's weather, regardless of how severe or insignificant, as some climate changing, planet ending event. When it's not, it's just weather. And before anyone says, oh Kevin, politics, why do you bring politics into it? It's not politics, it's life. It's our lives, it's everybody's lives. And it's destroying everybody's lives in small and large ways. It's destroying people's livelihoods and their mental well-being. The real tragedy of it all is that many people don't even realize it. leaving behind rural Tamworth. Coming up shortly is Alvacoke Marina and I believe that they have a cafe there and if it's possible to just moor up outside, I think I'll go in there and get a latte. Latte, latte. These sudden areas of canal activity and services and so on, they're little oases, oases, o oasises. a lot of sign of activity and by the look of it nowhere to stop anyway nope looks well and truly shut time of year I'm assuming never mind there's one crazy fool Pity the fool. A very brief glimpse of the remains of Alvacoke Priory. Built many years ago by a monk, or for a monk, who then populated it entirely with nuns. Years later, however, he got into some trouble over something and was taken away and eventually executed alongside a poor commoner who made hats. The beauty of chopping your own firewood, of course, is that by the time you've done it, you're so warm you don't need to light the fire. The M42 motorway makes a sudden appearance and then thankfully, just as quickly, disappears.
the last quarter mile or so the water appears to have gone a sort of shade of greeny grey silt maybe or clay from some extraction site somewhere or a lot of dirty dishwater Pooley Hall Polesworth ahead I'll either moor up here just before Polesworth or after Yes, this will do very nicely. And time for a walk into Polesworth. Good morning. And today is either going to be two and a half miles and six locks, or just two miles and no locks. I've just grounded basically. Wow, I am absolutely drenched. 